Thank you, everybody. Uh, it is a real honor and a pleasure to, to be here today speaking uh, in a last minute slot and pro tip, don't volunteer to talk on a completely new topic uh, the day before uh, you're, uh, you're, you're gonna take over for somebody who didn't show up because then you have to stay up all night working on your slides. Uh, this is uh, the, the sense team from, from last summer, a combination of the Mito team and the, the, the team that Aubrey was just referring to that, uh, that we're calling the underdog team. And you can see the, uh, the chief underdog there. <clears throat> um, I, I, I want to just spend a, 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 a minute talk. Aubrey talked about how this is the 10th anniversary of Sense Foundation. Uh, it's my ninth year with Sense Foundation. It's, it's been a, a, a privilege to, uh, to, to have started so early to help build the lab. I wish I could show a, a time-lapse uh, photography of, uh, of, of where it started and, and where it's gone. Uh, and to be involved with, with some of these amazing interns and uh, so many of these projects, including this one, are very intern-driven. Uh, um, the, the, like, I'm somewhat known for work on uh, the, the, the MITO team. Uh, what people uh, you know, may not realize is that, uh, that all the progress that Aubrey was talking about, how we were publishing papers all of a sudden, didn't happen until after we hired Amitha. Uh, so you can see why uh, um, that project got taken away from me and given to her. Uh, and, <laughs> uh, and, uh, and she's just a phenomenal mitochondrial biologist. Uh, and th so th this project that I'm about to tell you about uh, in involves a story about 7-keto cholesterol. Uh, I hope a lot of you have, have heard about it. It's kind of one of the classic bad guy molecules that Aubrey's been talking about for a long time. And uh, my history with it goes back even further than since I've been at Sense Foundation. Sense Foundation's actually been funding work on uh, trying to get rid of this really nasty molecule 7 keto cholesterol for uh, uh, for at least 10 years uh, with with work that, with, that we've funded in various places and um, I actually heard Aubrey talk give a talk about this uh, which was w one of the best talks that I've ever seen at Rice University like 15 years ago when I was in graduate school and so I've been thinking about it ever since then so this this project it kind of started out as, as some uh, ideas about how to uh, think about this problem and how to get rid of this nasty molecule uh, a different way uh, and started out as, as something that uh, we were sort of dabbling in and graduated from being my 20% project to something that's, that's all consuming now. Uh, so, uh, causes of death worldwide, this probably looks familiar to, uh, to many of you and as Aubrey was just saying, uh, atherosclerosis is, uh, is the world's biggest killer uh, if you risk adjust uh, all of these diseases for uh, for how what their underlying cause is, it's uh, it's it's believed by, uh, by by World Health Organizations to uh, to, to kill about 44 percent of everybody. And uh, uh, the, this this molecule, 7 keto cholesterol, an oxidized form of cholesterol, is is thought to be uh, one of the earliest stages. Um, leading to atherosclerosis. But not everybody simplistically believes in that model. The classic model is that you eat too many hamburgers and you get too much cholesterol in your bloodstream and that just sort of stochastically builds up and eventually you get plaques and eventually they, they rupture and you have heart attacks and strokes and you die. Uh, however, uh, this molecule is, is many, many, many times more toxic than, uh, than cholesterol, than LDL cholesterol is, so I call it the really bad cholesterol. Uh, it is the, uh, by far the most common uh, product of the reaction between a free radical and cholesterol. And so more often than not, you get this stable 7-keto cholesterol, which is extremely toxic. It has no uh, useful purpose in your body. Uh, it bioaccumulates uh, and is uh, extremely toxic. Uh, it can accumulate in the lysosomes of macrophages and uh, be an early uh, step in the uh, progression to becoming a foam cell. Foam cells uh, you know, build up as a layer inside of uh, atherosclerotic plaques and 7-keto uh, cholesterol is found inside of them as well as 
in the necrotic core of plaques. Let me change gears now and, 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 and reveal the, the, the drug, uh, the, the class of drug, I guess, the class of molecules that, uh, that I've been playing around with for the last few years on this, uh, and they're called cyclodextrins. Uh, and you may or may not have heard of them, but they're, they're a huge industry, and they uh, have a, a huge variety of applications. And the, the medical potential, despite the fact that cyclodextrins have been studied and applied for, for many decades, uh, maybe 80 years or so, uh, the, the medicinal applications of them are only just starting to be uh, realized. They come in three basic flavors, uh, alpha, beta, and gamma, which are three different sizes, whether they have six, seven, or eight uh, sugar rings that they're made out of, and uh, they um, have different forms of them, of which there are, there are probably thousands of different ones that have been invented. Uh, they're extremely customizable and modifiable. Any one of these hydroxyl groups, you can stick just about anything you want on it, uh, doing uh, synthetic chemistry. And here's just a, a few examples of some common cyclodextrins that are used for various purposes. Uh, industrial purposes, uh, they're used in, medically. Mostly now, they're only used as excipients, meaning carrier molecules for small hydrophobic drugs. Um, they're used in food. Uh, uh, alpha cyclodextrin is uh, approved in the European Union as a bulk uh, fiber uh, <coughs> a supplement. So maybe you ate some of it this morning in your uh, high fiber uh, Wheaties or something. Uh, and uh, there's, there's versions of these that are uh, extremely low, uh, low toxicity. They're household items like Febreze. And uh, people can use them, use different formulations of them uh, mixed with, uh, with, with, um, with other uh, guest molecules that, that stick in the cavity to, to engineer all kinds of wacky materials. You can make self-healing gels out of them. They look like jello, and then you cut it in half and take it apart and put it back together, and there's like no, no seam anymore. Somebody in Japan built a car out of cyclodextrins. Uh, and um, there's, a, there's a German scientist who's, uh, who's making self-healing paint uh, for, for cars. Uh, funny story behind that. Uh, so n now let me uh, just summarize a little bit the history of using cyclodextrins themselves as the active component of drugs. Uh, and, and that is what, uh, what we're trying to do here, is trying to engineer them to, uh, to, to be drugs to target 7-keto cholesterol directly. Um, the, the history here is, uh, is, is, goes back to the 90s, where this, um, this really, uh, this, this Australian group, uh, Len Carthrides and Wendy Jessup, uh, were, were, had a, a lot of foresight, and they already knew that 7-keto cholesterol was, uh, was a really toxic atherogenic molecule back then. This isn't a new discovery. Uh, there's, there's been tons of evidence of that for decades. And cyclodextrins were just starting to be explored. Uh, well, they, they, they were being explored in the 80s and 90s as cholesterol binding drugs, different uh, molecules, different versions of them bind cholesterol well. And so they went looking for a modified cyclodextrin that could specifically bind 7-keto cholesterol uh, with that hypothesis, and they found hydroxypropyl beta cyclodextrin, which I'll tell you a bit about. Uh, after they published a bunch of papers on it, however, they, they abandoned it and um, never went into to any animal studies. Uh, however, there was a group in Texas that seems to have picked up on this idea, and there was an orphan disease called neiman pick c which is a lysosomal storage disease that hyperaccumulates 7-keto cholesterol. And uh, these, these patients, uh, almost always children, are very sick and, and die very very young. Uh, there's good mouse and cat models for this disease, and uh, if you dose them with very high doses of hydroxypropyl beta cyclodextrin, you can rescue uh, the, uh, the small animals. Uh, people have started for uh, these the same reasons to, to, well, not for the same reasons. People are starting to look at it because hydroxypropyl beta cyclodextrin is so safe. People are starting to look at it for atherosclerosis, but there's some debate about whether you're targeting cholesterol or 7-keto cholesterol, and I'll present some evidence on, on why I'm strongly in favor of uh, uh, one hypothesis over the other. And uh, for the Neiman pick studies, uh, it's going into clinical trials. It's uh, entering phase two. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of money going into this now, presumably because they've got their eyes on this uh, rather than just this, which is an extraordinarily rare disease. Uh, so here's some older data on, on cyclodextrin. So this came from the Australians, where they're solubilizing 7-keto cholesterol here. Here is the effect that it has on cholesterol, which is to say nothing. 
Uh, it, it does a great job uh, solubilizing seven keto cholesterol. I'm going to talk a lot about this assay, so if you don't understand it, just uh, hold, hold tight and I'll explain it in more detail. Uh, seven keto cholesterol is really toxic, so with increasing doses, you kill cells in culture. And uh, this was work that we funded at Rice University, uh, where the, Kind of as a control for the experiments that they were doing, they were playing with with cyclodextrin uh, as a, you know, like I said, it has a lot of different different functions. Uh, they were using it as a carrier molecule and found that it was working better than anything else they were uh, using uh, while we were working on the enzymatic process to um, to, to rescue uh, the, uh, the the cells from seven keto cholesterol toxicity. And then more recently, work in that in that same lab. I uh, wrote a paper and patented the idea of using this, this same cyclodextrin uh, to, uh, to, to prevent and reverse uh, lipofuscin formation in, in cells. Uh, so I'll leave that uh, there as history and, uh, and show you this, this happy and sad video of cats with Neiman Pick disease. All three of these cats had this disease, and their, their phenotype is pretty similar to the humans. It's a devastating disease. All these cats have it. One of these cats has been treated with uh, hydroxypropyl beta cyclodextrin at a very high dose. And apparently, this, this video is, uh, is famous in, uh, in the FDA for how you uh, get something fast tracked into humans is by showing a, a heart tugging video like this. Um, because, uh, I mean, it clearly is, is working really dramatically uh, in, uh, to, to help these cats. Okay, so this is the, uh, the assay that, uh, that we use. It's a really simplistic assay to screen through many different compounds, many different cyclodextrins, many different modifications on cyclodextrins that, uh, that we've made. And it's a simple turbidity assay that we've automated. If you dump most sterols, they're not water soluble. You dump them in an aqueous solution, they get cloudy. And then if you manage to add something to the solution that can solubilize them, then uh, the solution turns clear. And that's an indication that they're binding to, uh, uh, to, to your target. Uh, and so uh, we've, we've automated it. You, you run uh, tons of these plates, read them in a plate reader, and you get data that looks like this. So we're just measuring, I'm just reporting the percent turbidity. So you start at 100% and then uh, go down, or in some cases it becomes more cloudy. So these are some cyclodextrins that have been studied for Neiman Pick disease. As I keep talking about, hydroxypropyl beta cyclodextrin uh, is, uh, is one of our favorites. It doesn't bind cholesterol up to 10 millimolar if you go out here further than a little bit better. But uh, I mean, these are ridiculously high concentrations. Uh, with 7 keto cholesterol, uh, it has uh, nice specificity. Uh, there's another one, sulfobutyl, that, uh, that, that's also been um, uh, tested somewhat in animal models for, for, uh, for Neiman Pick disease, uh, but, but hasn't really gone further than that. It doesn't seem to be as effective as uh, hydroxypropyl beta cyclodextrin. And the safety profile for, uh, for some cyclodextrins like uh, HP beta is just phenomenal. It's grassless, it's uh, much less toxic than like aspirin or something like that. It, so you can, you can dose uh, animals or humans with grams of it and th they're okay. Uh, and hydroxypropyl gamma cyclodextrin, a bigger one, doesn't, doesn't do anything. Uh, so we've, we've checked tons of different cyclodextrins and run them through our screening process. And here's a bunch more from the catalog. And some of them work better and some of them work worse. The, the, the point of, of showing this is to show how we gathered a ton of data about which uh, cyclodextrins were interacting with which targets um, in which ways. And I, and I deleted uh, a whole bunch of data because uh, I, I, I was practicing it this morning and I just had too much in there. But we also screened a bunch of other targets, all the other sterols that, that you can order from the Sigma catalog um, that, that helps us look at, at off-target effects. Um, and we could also do that computationally. So here's the all-star uh, former intern that, that Aubrey was bragging about before. She had this crazy idea when she was an intern. Uh, maybe we can, I was already, we were already working on this project and making some progress. And she said, well, why don't you just model them? You can learn so much about it. We said, do you know how to do that? She said, no, I'll figure it out. And so now she's like one of the world's experts in, uh, in modeling uh, cyclodextrins, uh, which is, is a very niche
niche field. Very few people in the world know how to do this. This is molecular dynamic simulation of just basic beta cyclodextrin. We've done hundreds of different simulations on different tweaks on, on different cyclodextrins, um, mostly with just cholesterol and 7-keto cholesterol, trying to optimize selectivity binding for, uh, for that and also to optimize the, uh, the affinity. Um, so beta cyclodextrin, just the core molecule, is known as a good cholesterol binding molecule, uh, but we can learn additional things here. If you stick it in this way, it's a um, uh, both cyclodextrin and uh, and uh, cholesterol are asymmetrical molecules, and if you start with it the wrong way, it's going to go in the way that it prefers. Uh, and this kind of, it, it seems sort of like uh, nitty-gritty to talk about, but that kind of information is what helped us figure out uh, about all the different um, subtle ways in which uh, uh, cyclodextrins are, are binding their, their targets. Now here's hydroxypropyl beta cyclodextrin binding 7-keto uh, cholesterol extremely tightly uh, and with, uh, with, with specificity. And uh, you, you should, to, to really get the lowdown on this, uh, we're, we'll have some, this is all unpublished data, uh, we'll, we'll have something coming out soon. Uh, we're furiously writing, um, uh, writing now. And we'll have some data on this coming out soon. So the uh, and uh, and go see the posters, uh, like Aubrey said, because uh, and uh, and grill Mia on this because uh, she's uh, she, she's brilliant and great at explaining it. So we we started uh, optimizing cyclodextrin, making little tweaks to them, uh, and, and and came up with some tricks on how to improve the the affinity for them. Uh, starting out by doing hundreds of these modeling, and this is the kind of data that you'll get from it. You'll get information about the geometry of how they're interacting, how closely in space they're interacting, and then uh, information uh, which, which I think is the most dramatic about the affinity. So when you find one that is actually going to grab on super tightly, then you massively increase the, 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 the free energy of interaction, or decrease it. Uh, and you can see that that, um, uh, that, that that also corresponds with super close, tight, and stable uh, interaction between the two molecules. Uh, those kinds of simulations are extremely high resolution. We do them for a whole microsecond, which is uh, an eternity uh, in, in terms of uh, um, nanosecond resolution uh, the simulations of molecules. A fast, cheap way to do lots of different uh, um, simulations is to do molecular docking. And so using this method, uh, this is actually, I think, 28 different uh, simulations that were done quickly, doing just small little tweaks to uh, to uh, different families of, uh, to, to a particular family of cyclodextrins to look for uh, a areas here where you seem to get separation between cholesterol and seven keto cholesterol, <clears throat> and that's what led us to, uh, to to this step, which is we synthesized some new cyclodextrins and um, checked to see if they could increase their uh, affinity uh, and maintain specificity for seven keto cholesterol. And uh, up on the top here, you have hydroxypropyl beta cyclodextrin. It doesn't bind cholesterol. It binds uh, 7KC a bit. Uh, however, and, and note the, the change in scale down here that uh, we're using lower dosing ranges, uh, that the, um, uh, all of that, uh, the, the modifications that we're making uh, to these that, uh, that I'm showing you here today, they all work phenomenally well to massively increase the affinity for our target 7-keto cholesterol. Uh, however, some of them, uh, all of them also increase their, their affinity for cholesterol. You probably uh, can't see all of them here, uh, but uh, some of them are, are maintaining better specificity than others, and uh, those are the ones that we're most excited about. So uh, a couple different families of new cyclodextrins that we've invented that, uh, that, that have extremely high affinity for 7-keto cholesterol. One in particular that, uh, that, that caught our eye that we're excited about, again, hydroxypropyl beta cyclodextrin up here at the top, uh, some nice specificity for, uh, for 7-KC. Uh, down here with, the, uh, with the, uh, one of the new cyclodextrins that we've made has extremely high affinity for 7-keto cholesterol and uh, good specificity. So, uh, like I was saying before, these are exciting molecules to work on because they're, they're really safe. You know, different versions are, are edible or breathable and, um, uh, or, or injectable, as is happening in, uh, in the Neiman Pick trials. Uh, a uh, you know, classic safety test uh, before going in vivo is to uh, collect some blood from whatever uh, hapless intern or CEO happens to be wandering down the hall at the wrong time and then uh, treat their blood with, uh, with something, and if it lyses it, turns it into Kool-Aid, then it, uh, it's killing their blood cells, and if it, if it stays clear, 
uh, than it's not. And uh, all of the new cyclodextrins that we made are, seem to be non-toxic with undetectable levels down uh, in the pharmacological, pharmacological range. Uh, as you go above that, you get some variation. However, the one that we're most excited about that had the most specificity for 7-keto cholesterol, we couldn't uh, find a, a dose that, which we could, uh, that we could kill any blood cells. So uh, I'm going to try to make the case that, uh, that, that uh, animal models for atherosclerosis are, uh, are, are, are useless and that uh, we should skip straight to humans. And my argument is that mice, rodents, don't get uh, atherosclerosis naturally. They, uh, they, and, and they seem not to, uh, when, when you do give it to them by knocking out their ability to metabolize cholesterol, uh, they're just, you know, not able to, uh, to, to, to take up cholesterol to clear it, and so it just builds up into artificial plaques. Uh, we don't think that's a good model. Um, so once again, we're working in humans. We're stealing their blood and then uh, treating blood with, uh, with drug in concentrations that we think uh, are, uh, are realistic for time periods that we think are, are realistic uh, because we know a lot because so much work has been done on safety for uh, cyclodextrins over the years. We know a lot about how uh, quickly it's cleared from circulation in different animal systems and even humans. Uh, and then what we're doing is in, instead of trying to measure uh, serum 7KC levels, which basically don't exist, uh, 7KC isn't transported in HDL or LDL, uh, it, and um, that's p part of what makes uh, 7KC so toxic, uh, is that it can't be transported out of cells well. Uh, we're measuring our ability to uh, release 7KC into the serum and measuring it by mass spec. Uh, and uh, the uh, early data on our new cyclodextrins is looking good. Here's hydroxypropyl beta cyclodextrin. It can remove some 7KC from, uh, from blood cells, from human blood cells. And uh, the, the first uh, new cyclodextrin that we made uh, can, can do a lot more, a lot better, uh, and uh, with uh, multiple donors. So to sort of recap, um, but there's, there's some big players in, uh, in this area now that are excited about being able to treat an orphan disease like, uh, like Neiman Pick disease. They probably have their eyes on going after bigger indications like, uh, like uh, a heart disease. Um, but they think that they're treating cholesterol, um, which uh, I think is crazy. I think they're actually treating 7-keto cholesterol and, um, uh, and that they're having the success that they are having. Uh, because of this. Uh, however, with, uh, with our drug, uh, it, uh, it blows it away in terms of uh, affinity for the target uh, by something like tenfold. Uh, so atherosclerosis, uh, 7KC is implicated in a number of diseases. It's one of those bad guys that accumulates in, in different tissues uh, with age, and we don't even know yet um, what, what all it's, it's implicated in. Just like in senescent cells now that, uh, that people are finding ways to, to kill them, all of a sudden you're finding aspects of aging that are being reversed when you, when you kill senescent cells. I predict uh, that, uh, that someday we'll, we'll see the same thing with, uh, with 7 keto cholesterol. Uh, however, atherosclerosis and heart failure, I think, are great indications. Of course, familial hypercholesterolemia uh, is just an exaggerated uh, way to get uh, atherosclerosis. Neiman Pick disease, we think that our drug would work way better than the, than the ones that are out there now. And uh, less, I, I don't want to try to claim that, that 7KC uh, is, like, uh, causes everything that, that ever has made everybody sick ever, but it, is, it does accumulate in, uh, in macular degeneration and, uh, and, and some cells in, in Alzheimer's disease. Uh, and our, our tools that we've developed to, uh, to, to make new cyclodextrins, to, to test them, to model them, uh, I think is a great platform. There's, um, there's other toxic oxysterols that we could be going after that uh, we haven't started working at yet, um, but are, are good targets for this kind of technology. And basically any small hydrophobic molecule that's, uh, that's bioaccumulating is, uh, is a potential target. Yeah, so the, the, the space in this area, it, it seems crowded because there's like tens of thousands of patents on cyclodextrins. However, when you get down into using cyclodextrins as, um, as drugs themselves, uh, then you're down into you know, single digits, like four or five uh, patents or something that are out there. So um, we think that we have uh, you know, pretty, uh, pretty strong uh, data and, and protections that, that we'll get there. 
Uh, so because cyclodextrins have, uh, have such a good regulatory profile uh, and are, are, are so well established on how you can use them safely, industrially, in food, in medicine, we think that the, the, the pathway to turning this into a, uh, an actually effective drug, uh, that, that we can actually write a, a, a plan and, uh, and, and have it be realistic. Uh, we're, we're talking to other experts on formulation and, and manufacturing, and these are realistic times. Timelines. Uh, we're developing some more uh, assays that we think will be uh, more efficacious um, uh, assays that, that will demonstrate that we can uh, reverse a foam cell phenotype, for example, or remove um, uh, some acute cholesterol from uh, plaque samples that we're working on getting from human uh, patients or cadavers. Um, and so we have a, a detailed month-by-month -month plan on how uh, we think that we could get a drug to clinical trials in three years. And as Aubrey said, uh, we are working and, uh, and, and, and making great uh, strides on, on turning this into a spin-out, uh, a SENS Foundation spin-out, um, you know, wholly incubated and owned at, at SENS Foundation. And we're calling it Underdog Pharmaceuticals. Uh, I'd love to talk to you about it and uh, take any questions if I still have time. <coughs> Thank you.